To understand how this very simple program works, let's break it down into pieces. The first line is rather straightforward. We simply are using the read underscore CSV function to read the CSV file into the school's data tipple. And the last line, once we have done the manipulation on the column, we take the mean of the Asian column from that data frame, from that tipple. The line in the middle is the complicated one, so let's take it apart in pieces. First of all, let's look at this part in the middle of the square brackets. If we were to determine the value of schools data dollar sign Asian, that would be this column here represented as a vector, then we could specify specifically item number two. So schools data dollar sign Asian square bracket two would be the second row in that column. And if we pass that into the isNA function, it would evaluate as true because that second value is an NA. On the other hand, if we passed in the third value from that column, that value is not an NA. So the value in the third row, which is the third value in this column represented as a vector, uh, passed into the isNA function would produce false. Now, the key thing here is that there's not really any difference. We saw in an earlier lesson between a single value and a whole vector of values. If I, instead of specifying a particular item in this vector, but rather pass the entire vector in, then it would perform the isNA function on the entire column. Each item in that column would generate an item in a vector of trues and falses. So there would, if there's uh, 50 rows, there would be 50 items in the vector. And if I pass them in, I would get a vector with 50 trues and falses in it, with each one corresponding to whether a particular row was too, true or false. So over here, I've represented what that would look like. You, It's essentially like constructing a vector that consists of false, true, false, true, and so on. If I pass a vector like that into the square brackets of the school's data dollar sign Asia vector, then what I'm essentially saying is select out all of the items in that vector based on whether they evaluate as true or not. So for every item in that vector where that corresponds to a false, we do not select it. But for every item in that vector that corresponds to true in the vector that we pass in, we do select it and we act upon it by changing its value to zero. So the operation we're doing is setting to zero every item in the vector where this condition that we set is in a has a value of true. So that is going to set the value of all items in the vector that have true values to zero and not affect any of the ones that have values of false. So when I put the is in a function inside of the square brackets, I do this all in one step and I essentially change all of the values with NAs to zeros in a single line of code. To see how this short script works, we're going to start by breaking it down into some additional steps. So the first thing that I'm going to do is to read in the school's data, reading it in as a tibble since I use read underscore CSV. If I look at the school's data, I can see scrolling over to the Asians col column that there are several rows that have NAs in them. And these are the ones that I want to change into zeros. The first thing that I'm going to do is to pull the Asian column out of the table, out of the data frame, and just turn it into a vector called Asian. So let's do that. And here I can see what it looks like. 
It just has all the values in that column, 101, NA, 2, 17, and so on. Then if I pass that vector into the isNA function, then it's going to go through each value in the vector and create another vector that's going to have values of true or false that correspond to the items in the uh, Asian vector. So let's go ahead and do that. Now here's my Booleans vector. I see that it's false for 101, true for NA, false for 2, false for 17, false for 86, and so on. So I've created a vector that's 169 items long, just like my Asian vector, just like the number of rows in the school data data frame. And then in this line, I perform the operation saying that the assignment that I am doing here, which is to assign a zero, only applies in cases where the index of the item in that vector is true. And so we can see for the first one it's false, the third and fourth one it's false, so it's not going to do anything to the 101 or the 2 or to the 17. But for any item where it evaluates as true, for example, the second item, which is the NA, then it will do the assignment and assign a zero to it. So if I run that, I can see that the Asian vector has changed now. Uh, what used to be an NA is now a zero. And so now I can take the mean of it and I get an answer 21.47. It's the same answer that my Python script gave me. Now we can compress this down. Um, in, in this particular example, although the Asian vector that we created got its NA values changed to zero, this did not have any effect on the original data frame. You can see that the column for Asian still has NAs in it. However, we could perform this in a sort of compressed way in place by passing the is NA operation applied to the column itself, not to a vector copy of the column, but apply it to the column itself and then take that result and feed it directly into the square brackets, not of another vector, but of the column itself in the table. So what we will do based on this test as to whether a particular row is an NA or not, we are going to actually change the original table. So let's go ahead and read it again just to be sure. Now we'll apply those changes. And if I look at the school's data now, I can see that the Asian column has actually been changed. The values that used to be NAs are now zeros. And of course, I can now calculate the mean and I get the same answer as before. So the difference between what we did here and what we did here is that we created a new vector which had values that corresponded to the rows in that column, but we didn't actually change the column itself. But by performing this on the column itself, we changed it in place within the data frame. So we actually changed the data frame rather than changing data that was copied from the data frame. One thing that we should do before we leave this exercise is to see what effect changing the missing values into zeros had on our result. So I'm going to read the school's data in again. Um, and here I'm going to have our calculate the mean of the Asian column with removing the NAs. Let's see what we get there. 24.85. Now, if we, re if we change all of the NAs into zeros, we see now that the value is lower, it's 21.47. So the average is lower because we have included rows that should have been zero. When we excluded those rows, our, va our value was actually higher than it should have been because we were basically ignoring all of the schools that did not have any Asian students and not including them in the averaging process. So you can see that it, it that um, paying attention to correctly handling missing values um, can be important on the outcome of your analysis.